What's up cousins? This is my much anticipated wiring video on the Top Gun John boat, my John boat to bass boat conversion. Guys, I hope that you're keeping your expectations low on this one. Um, just throwing it out there. I've never wired anything in my life. I don't have an electrical background. Um, this was so far outside my comfort zone, it's not even funny. And I've really put this off and procrastinated on nailing the wiring on this boat just because I just did not want to deal with it. But um, a majority of this information you're going to see is just kind of regurgitated information from the interweb of uh, Google searches and wiring diagrams that I found online and Tiny Boat Nation searches and about 30 different YouTube channels that I watched all kinds of different videos and kind of picked and choose what I thought was the legit way to do it. And that's the path that I went down. So I'm just going to try to translate the information uh, across to you guys as best as I can and just show you what I did in the boat. Um, again, not a professional. Um, I have confidence in what I've, I've done, but I'm sure there's things that could definitely uh, be improved upon. But uh, this is it. I just want to document it and show you guys. And uh, hopefully it'll help you. You can take something away from it. All that good jazz. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, kindly subscribe to my channel as uh, we will embark on boat build number two this fall. It is going to be a 10 foot ultralight. I'm pumped up about it. I really, really am. I got so many things I want to share with you, but we're just going to have to wait for it. Um, but that is it, guys. Again, thank you for tuning in. May your tiny boat bills be great. What's up, guys? I'm going to try to play catch up here because as you can see, we've got, we've got a lot of wiring already ran. Everything's pretty much already roughed in. Um, you know, I started my YouTube channel after I'd already, already roughed all the wiring in. So I'm just going to try to catch you guys up with what I've got and kind of how I did it. And then we're going to do the final wiring of everything. And I'll try to document that portion of it. Okay. So you'll note, I've got all the wires coming out here. Everything's roughed in and all the wires coming out here, roughed in from the front. So all of these wires are from this point forward. Okay, up front, I've got um, some USB ports, some stow lights, an LED light bar, and I've got uh, the blue LED undermounts on this middle bench. And then all these guys coming from the rear is from the bilge pump, the live well fill, the live well recirc, uh, rear stow light LEDs, blue LED undermounts, uh, rear pole light, and... Uh, I think that's it. Probably leaving something out up front, nav lights. So basically everything is roughed in and it runs to this point. Um, in the rear, everything comes to here. In the front, everything comes to here. Let's talk about this. Okay, up front, what I've done is, um, and again, I'm just catching you guys up to speed on this because this portion of it's not a step-by-step -step because this was done long before my channel. Um, existed so we've got as you can see here and maybe I do a small boat short video on how I did this that is a that's a LED light okay and it just feeds around what I've implemented here is these plastic clips that you could get in the electrical section at your uh, home home supply store of choice okay and they, they hold the wires up really nicely Okay, another thing I've done here is when it routes around the side, okay, it's going to feed into this conduit. All right, this is just some PVC. I'm not even exactly sure the size, maybe quarter inch or half inch, but it's just going to feed through this, okay, and then it's going to disappear back into the original aluminum decking of the boat that I cut up. All right, these PVC pieces are just Gorilla adhesive in place, all right. And this gives it some protection because uh, my decking is going to sit here and water is probably going to channel through here and feed down into the bottom of the boat. So I just figured I would do that. It fit. Why not? All right. What I've done is I've hole sawed out some, some holes. All right. To feed wires through. Okay. And then I've also drilled through my framing. And uh, I don't know if you could tell. But those holes are plugged with that same PVC. Okay, see how I did that? And I did it over here as well. Because these are going to feed out into my battery. So, 
That way I don't have to worry about moisture getting in there and rotting out the wood through the holes. And uh, it gives me a nice smooth surface to feed my wires through. Again, you'll note the plastic clips and how these wires are held up. They're not resting down in this channel just in case water ever gets in there. I'm keeping them elevated up and off the surface. Okay. Another thing I did over here is uh, I didn't plug this one with PVC. So I went ahead and adhesived around the hole where the wire feeds through. The only issue I ever see with that is if I ever need to get that particular wire out, it's not going to come out of the boat. I will have to rewire that section or cut that wire out. Um, but I'm okay with that. I'm anticipating everything's going to be fine. It'll feed through. Right this section I did some loom. And then it feeds into the PVC. Um, everything's kind of tied in together. There's not a ton going on in the front end of this. Again, I've got, I've got an LED light over here. An LED light under here, an LED light here. Okay, those all three feed together and tie into one and go to the rear. All right, I've got USB ports here. All right, so those go to those go to the rear. I've got my nav lights. Okay, so that goes to the rear, and um, and then underneath this bench here, under here, and then under here, I've got my blue LED lights. That feed in and then lastly I've got this LED light light bar the wiring for that is actually the original harness that came with it this is a mic 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 tuning light bar that I got a long time ago actually on Amazon Prime and uh, it came with its own wiring harness kit and that's what you'll see feeding through that channel is the wire that came with it I'm just gonna tie that kit into what I do back here for my wiring so that's a quick walkthrough of the front end. I'm sure we'll touch on that more as the video continues, but for now you get the basic layout of the front end of the boat. Okay, this is the rear end of the boat. And uh, this is where the bulk majority of my wiring is coming from. We've got our, uh, the first thing I see here is our transducer slash uh, depth finder. We do have a small LED light inside the live well that's wired uh as of now it's going to be solely on its own switch but that may change um blue led underglows we've got a rear stow light here okay we've got on the other side rear stow light we've got another rear stow light here we've got a rear bilge pump Okay, we've got a live well fill. And then over here we have the live well recirculate. And then we've got a rear pull light. And I think that's about it for the rear. I try to keep things in the rear really clean. Um, you'll see that my my wiring there comes out of my out of my live well fill and tucks under and routes around. Okay, you'll see that my bilge comes out. I sleeved all those wires um, and just uh, I actually used I bought in bulk some of the heat shrink wrap, but what I did was I did I did not heat shrink it. I just fitted it through as a sleeve and it fit really really tight. So I could probably uh, hit that with a blower and it'll shrink up, but um, I, I actually like like the effect that it's giving it, and um, it protects it a little bit more. You'll see that I've also got wiring channeling up under my framing and routing around, okay? And then these bigger wires, I actually routed through with um, C-channel aluminum. And what I did was I, I put the C-channel in place with some uh, stainless screws. And uh, and then they they slide, the wiring slides through. It feeds out. All right. It goes behind this stow, stow compartment. And uh, what you can't see is there's a there's a hollow chain chamber under here. And then it, it goes under the bench through that channel, actually. It was a it was a real pain to uh 
oh, it was a real pain to route it. I had to uh, feed it through with a uh, clothes hanger to get all that wiring through. And I'll, I'll show you if you can, if you can even see it. There, there, under here, now you can't see it, but there's an access under here that, that I could fill um, with my finger. But uh, if I ever need to uh, get any of those wires or feed something through, I could, I could fit a clothes hanger under there. Um, but anyhow, that's a whole nother deal. But that's kind of the, the rear of the boat layout. I try to simplify things instead of having wires just ran everywhere. Um, I try to all feed them the same direction and keep them all kind of tied together neatly. And, and really my main thing I wanted to do, especially like back here, was just try to keep everything, um, try to keep everything clean and hidden. What I've got here is a uh, eight gauge wire that I purchased at the Home Depot. It's in red and black. Again, it's eight gauge. It is, it's copper. Okay, um, what I'm going to do with this, and I'm going to explain my setup, but I'm going to install this um, through my framing, and it's going to go to this battery box. So my setup in this, in this boat is that I'm going to run two batteries. I'm going to run one battery up front that this 8-gauge wire is going to run from, and the 8-gauge wire is going to transfer power from this battery up here to my Blue Sea Systems fuse block and terminal, and bus bar and then also to all my gang switches so power will run from the front of the boat from this battery to everything here um, now in the back i'm going to run battery number two okay battery number two will mount in this battery tray uh, made a video on that if you guys hadn't seen it but uh battery number two will stay back here and power my electric motor um so if i decide i don't want to run electric motor and i want to put the gas burning honda four stroke eight horsepower on I simply pull this battery out, okay, put my gas tank in, pull my electric motor off, put my gas motor on, and then I could go to the big lake, okay? The battery that goes up front stays in the boat and powers all of my electronics. At least that's how I envision this working out. Um, so this battery is going to run off 8 gauge, okay? I've got 8 gauge, I've got 15 foot of black and 15 foot of red, to my understanding, 8 gauge is rated for 50 amps up to 25 foot. Okay, so I technically could have went 10 gauge, but the price variance between 10 gauge and 8 gauge was so minimal that I figured I might as well up my wire size and go ahead and just do it. So I'm going to run 8 gauge to the back of the boat in here, and I figure that'll be more than enough for me to power all of my electronics in the entire boat at one time um, without having any issues. So um, that is the wire that I'm using for the most part to power the boat. So I've got everything for the front coming out here, everything for the rear coming out here. I've uh, labeled everything. Uh, so this is for research. They're zip tied together in different feeds. Um, so there's no confusion as far as what goes to what. I'm giving myself ample wire to, to do the final wiring into, which you'll see later what I've fabricated for this area is a, is a waterproof uh, box that's going to house everything. Um, do want to be transparent with you guys. This is a 14 gauge primary wire. This is not marine gray wire. Um, for obvious reasons, I would recommend marine gray wire. At the time that I did the wiring process, this was uh, over a year ago, I, I didn't understand the difference, I guess. I didn't do my due diligence. I'd use primary wire in a lot of automotive applications uh, for, for working cars and, and trucks. And so I just went with it without really um, digging into the, the difference in the copper tinning and how the, uh, the marine gray wire is actually is a different grade. Um, but this is what I have, so we're just going to go with it and document it. Um, guys, my boat is garage kept, so it's not going to sit outside in the rain every single day, um, or any day for that matter. Um, the only time this boat can ever get wet is if it's in the water, um, and for some reason it were to take on water, or if uh, it gets rained on. And uh, I feel that I've done my due diligence as far as keeping my wiring um, hidden and elevated off of channels that may accumulate water, um, looming them through PVC, looming them through loom, um, covering them with panels um, that will deter water from getting into um, tight spots where the wiring has been ran. Um, I put a lot of thought into it with the triple heat shrink wrap and the um, the marine grade connections and uh, the dielectric grease that I'm going to be using. So I, I feel that 
I, I will be okay. But um, if I could go back and, and do it again, um, I'll, I'll put it this way. Boat Build 2 will have a marine gray wire if it even has any electronics in it. Um, because if I go ultralight, it might not have a whole lot in it. But uh, anyhow, I just want to be transparent with you guys. So obviously I would at this point recommend marine gray wire but that's not what this is so uh just want to let you guys know and keep you in the loop i hope you can appreciate that and don't uh bust me too hard on here okay cousins let me show you what we're working with here and what all we're going to wire up um i've got nine gain switches okay i've got a voltmeter a usb and a live well timer okay so um what we've got here is a panel that i made out of a uh, very thin uh plywood um, it's like the project panel and uh, I believe it it may be a quarter inch okay I've coated in oil based paint front and back and then I've wrapped it in carbon fiber vinyl now with this plywood it was very tricky I had to individually measure out I went a little overboard here I had to individually measure out each hole and cut a slot for each one of these switches to lock in and then you can see here I just cut one big hole for this unit to simply go into place but this, okay, is gonna is gonna uh, screw in, okay, to this over here. All right, let me show you. This is another thing. I went a little out of control uh, <laughs> when I did this um, a while back. This box is uh, is custom built, and it's 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 built to be waterproof. But um, that panel that I just showed you is gonna bolt to this side. Okay, and then it's going to house all my wiring. See, this thing's waterproof. Okay, this thing also, it's got two chambers, and it just simply slides down over that rib, okay? And then I've got a, a panel that's carpeted that, that locks in over everything. All right, you'll see when we get further into this. Now, on this side, okay, um, so on this side, we're going to have all my switches. Wiring's going to go through, and on this side, we're installing a uh, Blue Sea Systems. And I'll leave the link in the description of the video of this where I got this on Amazon. A Blue Systems uh, fuse blocks. All right, what I like about this is it's got your individual fuses. It's got your positive coming in, your positive lead, and it's got a negative lead up top with negative uh, bus bars. Okay, so everything's going to come into here. I, I, again, I went overboard. We've got, we've got this kind of wrapped in carbon fiber because this actually has a glass window on it. Let me show you this. See this? So this panel... Will actually, will actually go on this side and screw into place. Okay, so we'll have this panel over here, and then we'll have this guy over here. Okay, and then it'll be surrounded in carpet. I did this with a window. Um, again, I know you guys are probably looking at me like I got way too much time on my hands. This was like over a year ago, maybe even longer than that, where I was just, I was tinkering with stuff, and I had, I was just taking my time. Um, no YouTube and uh, so I did this with this glass window Reason being is because at the time I was running a different fuse box I wasn't using this one I was running a smaller one that was made by Mick tuning that I think held four fuses and They would actually light up when a fuse popped so I thought it'd be really cool to have a glass window So if anything pop you could see it through the window flashing, and you know exactly what the deal is Well, obviously this one doesn't do that but um, I had already built it this way, and I think it's just going to look trick. Um, kind of cool to see all the wires and the actual uh, uh, fuse box in there. I'm going to try to do everything real clean. But uh, anyhow, I just want to walk you through how all that's going to go down and how that's going to go in here before we get into actually wiring all this stuff up. Um, but uh, I think it's going to be cool. That is it for this one, guys. Uh hate to leave you on the edge of your seat but in video number two we're going to jump right back in and we're going to wire up a, a kill switch that i got for the battery and we're going to do all the electronics and uh i hope i hope that you've uh enjoyed what you saw so far sorry if this is very lethargic kind of just doing the walkthrough deal but uh i felt that it was information that needed to be shared to kind of transition us into really getting into it um so thank you for joining me again may your tiny boat builds be great and uh have a great day